homework problems, mainly because <clears throat> the problems are getting more difficult and um, we are moving through the material pretty quickly. So I would like to start out with the first problem which um, of the proofs, which was um, to prove that the set of idempotent elements is, a cl is closed under multiplication. Now the proof of this is not technically difficult, probably the write-up is more difficult. So the first thing for the write-up that's really important is to look at the set, to write that in set notation. They talk about the set of idempotent elements. Um, we're really talking about the restricted set where a belongs to the ring and a squared is equal to a. And I call that set i so that I can work with it. I also know um, that this ring is commutative. So I know that xy is equal to yx for all xy belonging to the ring. Notice that I didn't reuse a and b because it would be an abuse of variables. So what I'm supposed to show is that i is closed under multiplication. So what does that mean? That's the first question. Well, in raw terms, it means that if I chose two random elements from the set i, that their product remains in the set i. So see how useful it is to actually talk about a set. So my scratch work says, um, basically starts out with u and v belonging to i, and I must show that u times v also belongs to i. What does it mean for u and v, u times v to belong to i? Where am I reaching for here? Well, it means that u times v squared is equal to uv. That's the criteria to get into that set i. So what can I use to, um, just to summarize what I have here so far? Um, the puzzle pieces I'm allowed to use in my proof is that u and v belong to i, or u squared is u, or and v squared is v. Those are things I'm allowed to use. Again, here I point out how useful it was to break this down in, and write it in terms of sets. I'm also allowed to use that R is commutative, the x, y is y, x. Where do I have to go? Well, I have to go to the point where u, v squared is equal to u, v, or expanding that u, v squared, I have to show that u times v times u times v is equal to u, v. Well, I think I can see it falling out here in the way I've written it already. It's a piece of cake. Uh, technically, I remember I said this wasn't hard. uv squared is equal to uv times uv, which is uh, expanded out. I can drop off the parentheses, it's uv, uv, and I can rearrange things because r is commutative, and I get u squared v squared is equal to uv. Where does each one thing come from? Well, I'm allowed to drop the parentheses by the associative property of multiplication on a ring. And I'm allowed to swing the order of these things around because of the commutative property, because I'm using the fact that r is commutative. Right over here, u squared v squared equals uv. I'm using the fact from the no that u squared is u and v squared is v. So let's write this up nicely. Always seems mysterious when they come up with notation, right? And we already thought this through. But let i be the set of idempotent elements we claim that i is closed under multiplication. This means we will show if uv belongs to i, then u times v also belongs to i. Let uv belong to i, then u squared is u, and v squared is v. We're going to step the reader through the entire calculation, not give them a bang series of calculations without explanations. uv squared is uv, uv, well, they believe that for sure because that's the definition of squaring something. But by multiplicative associativity, I can drop off the parentheses. Then I can rearrange the order by uh, commutativity. And by the fact that u squared is u and v squared is v, I get uv. Remind the reader what you've just shown them, u, since uv squared is equal to uv. That means that uv is, belongs to i. Therefore, i is closed under multiplication. Walk them back out. And we're done with this problem. Part b asks you to find the set of all idempotents in the specific ring, a product ring, z6 uh, cross z12. Now, I haven't mentioned uh, product rings yet 
because uh, I figured we'd come across them and I'd define them later. Now, I, the problem is I don't remember where they were defined in the book and I didn't want to go through the book. But I do know what, in general, what it looks like. Uh, it's a cross product, so a coordinate pair. So what it means is that um, the first element comes from that z6 and the second element comes from that z12. But what does it mean when I multiply these two elements? Obviously, when I add them, it seems reasonable that you'd add component by component. And I didn't want to search through the book and find out where they first defined the product. So I went back to um, one of the computational problems and uh, number five, and I noticed the answer to number five was in the back of the book. So um, they had said that uh, two, three times three, five in Z5 cross Z9, the answer was one, six. Well, using backward extrapolation, I looked at that and said, well, two times three is six, which is one and 3 times 5 is 15, which is 6 in Z9. So it's exactly what I thought it was, that the product is component-wise product. <clears throat> is this a useful way to do things? I think so. It's always worked for me. So what it means is, for our specific problem, when we take A times B times A times B, uh, a, uh, a, the order pair AB times the order pair AB, what we mean is we take the product of the first two elements uh, the first in mod 6 and the product of the second two elements in mod 12. So that tells me that I need to look at the idempotent elements in Z6 separately from the idempotent elements in Z12. So here's Z6 drawn out. Um, I just squared all the elements and I looked at which ones gave me the same thing back in a table form. Z12, I was a bit more lazy, I didn't want to do that by hand, so I went to uh, Excel, Excel will do mod calculations for you, and I went through the 12 ele elements of Z12 and I just look where they exactly um, turned out, the square element turned out to be the same in the first column. And we get 0, 1, 4, and 9. So then I need to take, uh, no notice that I have to take all the um, possible combinations of those red circled pieces, um, and I can list them out. For example, 1 in Z6 crossed with 1 in Z12 is an idempotent element. 1 in Z6 crossed with 4 in Z12 is a second element and so forth. So you can just list them out by brute force. And for some reason I almost forgot zero. So all the zero elements also have to be there.